So hello. So today we'll be discussing the heme synthesis and how does it takes place inside our body. So heme is considered to be the most important porphyrin containing compound. So why it is that? Because we ha first have to know what exactly heme is. So heme is the non-protein part of hemoglobin. Actually, hemoglobin resides inside the red blood cell and it helps in the transportation of carbon dioxide and oxygen in our blood. That is why hemoglobin is important. And since heme is the part of hemoglobin, that is why heme is very much important. So hemoglobin is made up of two parts mainly. One is the proteinaceous part and another is the non-proteinaceous part. The proteinaceous part of hemoglobin is the globin protein itself and the non-protein part goes to the heme. So heme is the non-protein part of hemoglobin and helps in the formation of hemoglobin. And heme itself is composed of two compounds. So heme is made up of two parts which consist of a porphyrin ring and a iron that is ferrous iron. So that is why heme is very much important. So our next is heme is primarily synthesized in the liver that is true and the erythrocyte producing cells of bone marrow known as erythroid cells so as you all can see now that the succinyl coa is the starting material for heme synthesis but before that we have to know how the succinyl coa is prepared so let's take a look upon it so as you can see succinyl coa is prepared from succinic acid and coenzyme a so what happens that the succinic acid got a carboxylic group. So this is the carboxylic group of succinic acid and the coenzyme A got its sulfhydryl group. So this is the sulfhydryl group of coenzyme A. So this hydrogen from the sulfhydryl group combines with this OH of this carboxylic group and liberates out as water. So liberation of water takes place and there is a formation of bond between this sulfur and this carbon atom. After that, suc succinyl CoA is prepared. So, succinyl CoA is prepared by dehydration process between the succinic acid and coenzyme A. So, now we know how the succinyl CoA is formed. So, now the succinyl CoA combines with glycine, the simplest amino acid. And after the combination of succinyl CoA and glycine, there is the liberation of the coenzyme A. So the coenzyme A liberates out as its reduced form, and there is a bond formation between this carbon of succinic acid and glycine. So the succinyl CoA, after the removal of coenzyme A, it leaves out, and there is a bond formation between this carbon and this carbon. And now what we got a unstable form that is known as alpha amino beta keto adipate as you can know that the alpha carbon is attached with the amino group and the beta carbon is attached with the keto group that is why it is named so after that this unstable structure from there the liberation of carbon dioxide occurs so the liberation of carbon dioxide happens from this side so from this side the carbon leaves out as carbon dioxide so now there is a reduction in the carbon number and what we have got is the amino levulinate so this is this table structure that we got with one two three four five carbon so and this reaction is aided by the enzyme known as amino levulinate synthase so this is the enzyme amino levulinate synthase that helps in the production of amino levulinate now this amino levulinate get converted into porphobilinogen. So this conversion of amino levulinate into porphobilinogen is a crucial step of the whole heme synthesis. It is the rate determining step of heme synthesis and the enzyme that helps in this process is known as porphobilinogen synthase. So we ha also have to know the mechanism behind the formation of porphobilinogen. So this is the mechanism behind the formation of porphobilinogen. So the thing we have to remember is that we need two molecules of amino levulinate to form 
one molecule of porphobilinogen so that is that is the thing we have to remember and the next thing next thing we have to remember is that there is liberation of two molecules of h2o so from where the liberation of h2o has occurred so what we can see that these two amino nebulinate are aligned with each other so there is removal of h2o or water that is from there two hydrogen and from here one oxygen so there is liberation of one molecule of h2o now from here one oxygen and from here two hydrogen liberates out as another ox and another water molecule so in total we are leaving out with two molecules of h2o so two molecules of h2o liberates out for the formation of one molecule of porphobilinogen and the next thing to remember is that we need two molecules of amino in it and after the formation there is some there is some shifting there is some arrangements of the pi electrons and we are getting what the porphobilinogen so now we are pretty clear about the formation of porphobilinogen so the principle is dehydration but the mechanism is a bit different from what i have shown so the mechanism is Schumann me mechanism and Jordan mechanism. So there is two mechanism, Schumann and Jordan. So I'll be linking that real mechanism in the description below. So please check out for that. But the main principle remains the same. That is the dehydration. So here what you can see, eight molecules of amino in it is forming four molecules of porphobilinogen. So, so what I have shown to you that two molecules of amino in it was required to produce one molecule of porphobilinogen. The so same is happening here. Eight molecules of amino in it is required to produce four molecules of porphobilinogen and which liberates out HH2O because each step requires the liberation of two molecules of H2O. So for four molecules of porphobilinogen, eight molecules of H2O is liberated out. Now let's go to our next step of the reaction. So now, Four molecules of porphobilinogen is forming one molecule of pre-europorphyrinogen. So pre-europorphyrinogen is produced from four molecules of porphobilinogen by the liberation of ammonia group NH3+. Sorry, there will be no plus over here. It is NH3. So there is removal of NH3 group that is ammonia group so four ammonia is leaving out from here so this ammonia is coming from this amine group of the porphobilinogen so this amine group of porphobilinogen is released out so from four molecules there is four number of amine group as ammonia liberated out and this combination of four porphobilinogen is forming one molecule of pre-europorphyrinogen so the bonding is taking place with this carbon uh, or and the adjacent carbons but the cyclic structure is not finished yet so there is a gap between here as you can see but there will be formation of bond here so this reaction is aided by the enzyme known as europorphyrinogen synthase so europorphyrinogen synthase is the enzyme which is helping in the production of pre-europorphyrinogen now let's take a look upon that structure very closely so what we can see we have acetyl group propionyl group then again acetyl group then again propionyl group like that there is this fashion if we consider it in a clockwise manner so there is first acetyl group then propionyl group if we count it in a clockwise manner and there is no bond formation taking place over here and now we have to look the differences that has taken place after the reaction. So after the reaction, it converted into europorphyrinogen. So europorphyrinogen is produced from pre-europorphyrinogen. But how is it possible? So there is some changes that have occurred. So you can see these changes. So these changes can be seen that there is acetyl group, propionyl group, then again acetyl group, then again propionyl group. If we count it clockwise, but see, there here was acetyl group and here is propionyl group. But now this is changed. 
here it is propionyl group now here it is acetyl group so the arrangement of propionyl and acetyl group in one of the subunits have changed so how is it possible and it is possible to the enzyme known as uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase so this is the enzyme that is helping in this dearrangement and formation of this bond so what we have seen there was an open chain over here so this OH and H liberates out as water so this H2 liberates out and formation of a bond takes place and this structure is now called uroporphyrinogen now this uroporphyrinogen is converted into coproporphyrinogen and again we have to look upon the differences that has taken place during this reaction so the coproporphyrinogen is produced from uroporphyrinogen by the enzyme known as uroporphyrin decarboxylase as from the name of the enzyme the group it is very much clear that decarboxylation is taking place that is removal of carbon so removal of carbon is taking place so there is removal of four co2 molecules so from, so from where this co2 molecule is liberating out so as you can see there were acetyl groups before so all these were acetyl groups so now these are converted into methyl groups as acetyl group contains two carbons but methyl group contains one carbon so the difference is that from the acetyl group the carbon liberated out so from each acetyl group there is liberation of one carbon and from the four acetyl group there is liberation of four carbons as co2 so now we got the coproporphyrinogen and it is converted to protoporphyrinogen by the enzyme known as coproporphyrinogen oxidase so we have to again take a look upon the differences that has taken place after the conversion so what is there that this propionyl group now is converted to vinyl group so this propionyl group is also converted to vinyl group so this adjacent propionyl groups are converted to vinyl group the propionyl group contains three carbon and the vinyl group contains two carbon so from this two propionyl group the liberation of the carbon as carbon dioxide has taken place so these two molecules of carbon dioxide liberates out from this two propionyl group so now there is vinyl group over these places and it is now called protoporphyrinogen so now this protoporphyrinogen is converted into protoporphyrin so let's take a look upon the differences that has taken place after the reaction so there were four hydrogen atoms over here see there are four hydrogen atoms attached with the nitrogen but here there is two hydrogen missing so there is liberation of two hydrogen atoms so two hydrogen atoms is liberating out because there is the enzyme known as protoporphyrinogen oxidase the oxidase group of enzyme causes the oxidation of its substrate and the same is happening here as we know that oxidation is adding up of oxygen atom or liberating out of hydrogen so here the hydrogen is liberating out and due to the liberation of this hydrogen oxidation is taking place and now this nitrogen don't have any hydrogen but still it need to maintain its valency that is 3 so to maintain its octet and its valency of 3 it is doing what is it is rearranging the pi bonds in order to accommodate its surrounding electrons in a much more stable state so what is the nitrogen is doing it is rearranging the pi electrons with respect to the adjacent carbons in order to accommodate its outer shell electron so now there is a dearrangement of these pi electrons as you can see the difference between these two structure and now it is called protoporphyrin so now we can see that the protoporphyrin is getting converted to heme so this is the last step of the heme synthesis and it is aided by the enzyme known as ferrochelatase so what happens is that there is addition of ferrous ion so ferrous ion is being added and there is liberation of two hydrogen atoms so two hydrogen atoms liberates out and now you can see there is no hydrogen attached with these nitrogens and they are forming 
coordinate bonds with this ferrous ion and what we have got is a chelate now this is known as heme which is composed of this porphyrin ring this whole porphyrin ring and the ferrous ion at the middle so now this last structure is known as the heme so now it is clear to us how the heme is prepared from the succinyl coa so the main step in this heme synthesis was the formation of porphobilinogen from the amino levulinate so thanks for watching stay healthy bye